So if you're like me, three years ago, who wants to start backcountry camping and spent hours and hours into researching and trying to find out what it's the best thing to buy, um, you know, the, the brands, the price and everything, watch this and I hope this will help you out. Hello guys, welcome to Puck Camper. I'm Jonathan. This video I want to talk about the essential gears that you need to bring if you want to start backcountry camping. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff here. First, you need to know what type of backcountry um, camping you're doing. There are two types, mainly two types. One is for hiking, the other one is portaging. Portaging is basically um, carrying canoe over your head um, as part of a hike. So I have two different types of backpacks here. This one over here is your typical backpack that you will get um, for hiking. Uh, it has a lot of different compartments and is it's good for organizing stuff. This guy over here is for portaging. The reason for that is because this guy is basically a big giant dry bag. So if you drop your bag in the water or if your canoe flipped over um, you can ensure that everything inside is going to remain dry. This way you're not afraid of being in the water and stuff like that just in case. The worst thing that can happen to you is when you have, uh, when you drop your back in the water and everything gets wet. That's not fun. If you are a beginner, like you want to just try to do backcountry camping and um, you're not sure which bag to get, I would definitely recommend something like this. Um, this is the basic startup. I had a 50 liter one first and then um, as I go I realized that the 50 liter is too small for me. So this one is the Osprey um, Zen uh, Zenith 75 liter and it's good for me for at least 5 days uh, five days out there and that's good. Alright? Okay, now let's talk about something that cost me a lot of money. When I first started it was car camping. So I got the Marmot Limelight person tent and you can see it's quite big it weighs about five pounds and um, it was good for me because I could camp with other people and um, I didn't really have to worry about the weight and I said as I started backcountry camping this became a problem because it's too heavy right and it's giant gigantic I got this guy recently the uh, MSR hubba hubba um, one person tent and look at the size different. The MSR Hubba Hubba One Net, one person, weighed about two pounds and a couple ounces. I don't remember the exact number. You guys can always look it up. Um, it's not expensive, it's about $350. And um, obviously, it's a great upgrade for me to go from here to here. One thing you need to know about the tent is that when it says three P or three person, it's actually for two persons to sleep comfortably. Obviously then two person means that you can sleep one person comfortably and one person means that you can only sleep one person inside and nothing else. This is tight space. Um, but for backcountry camping, um, when, you, when, when the weight matters, like when you're going for a long hike and the weight matters, this is definitely what you want to get instead of this guy. Okay, now let's talk about sleeping bags. So I forgot to mention that um, the stuff I'm talking about today, they are mainly for uh, spring, summer, and fall. I'm talking about when there's no snow and it's not freezing outside. So this is the sleeping bag that I've been using for the past three years. I got it from my parents. Um, they've had it for a while and they just pass it down to me when they, when they realize that I'm going out camping. This is from Taiwan. I have no idea what the brand is. Um, you can see that it's actually pretty good. It's a down sleeping bag so that means it compresses 
um, into smaller size and this is a zero degree. Recently online I found out that they have this sleeping bag. So this is a Mountain um, Hardware uh, Phantom Spark and it's rated at negative two degree. And you can see the differences in size as well. Right? You can see the differences in size. Ooh. They're both down sleeping bags and um, one thing about the down sleeping bag is that when it gets wet, it doesn't keep you warm as well as the synthetic ones. If you've bought a sleeping bag before, if you've seen one at like, you know, Mac or whatever, you know that a synth synthetic one can be pretty big. This guy over here obviously is good for um, backcountry because this is small size. Um, the, more, the smaller the item is, um, you can pack more stuff in your backpack. And lighter it is, obviously. However, this one over here, in particular, is not cheap at all. It's um, I think the listed price is four sixty. I got it on Boxing Day, so it was cheaper. But you know, I don't have to buy a new sleeping bag for at least like five, six, eight, or maybe ten years, right? With this size over here, which is really good. I'm happy with this. Happy Christmas. Nope, that doesn't make sense at all. Okay. Now, a little trick to keep yourself warmer um, with a sleeping bag. Although the negative two degree sleeping bag um, is good enough for most weather other than right now winter. However, you can get this uh, sleeping bag liner um, to put it inside to keep yourself warmer. This is a C2 Summit Thermolite Reactor. Whoa. Thermolite Reactor. You can see how small it is, right? Okay. Now, let's talk about sleeping pads. What? You can see how big this guy is, right? This is the very first sleeping pad I got. This is insulated and um, it's huge, right? Yeah, I, I sleep really well with this. Now, the problem with this is that obviously it's not suitable for uh, backcountry camping because, again, the size and the weight. So, after this guy over here, ugh, I got a thermal thermal rest. Uh, I don't remember the model name, but it's a insulated sleeping pad as well. You can see that I went from a huge sleeping pad into a smaller one. This one is insulated as well, although not that much. I don't remember the rating. This been a while, but just this Christmas or Boxing Day, I got this. This is um, C2 Summit Ultralight um, sleeping pad. And the only problem with this is that it's only filled with air. It's not insulated at all. So this is definitely not um, recommended for cold weather because you will feel the ground like the, you'll feel the cold for sure. But look at the size difference again, right? Oh my God, man. I'm so excited. Um, this thing cost about 120 bucks. I believe this thing cost me about a hundred bucks as well. Obviously, when you're backcountry camping, um, the size of the items matter, especially if you're going on a hiking trip, right? So it really depends on what type of backcountry camping you want to go for. This, I don't mind bringing for portaging. Actually, I brought this the whole time so far for portaging. But with this now, I'll bring this to um, um, hiking trips for sure and not this. Make sense? This is a pillow. This pillow is insulated and recently I got this from Mac. This pillow is not insulated, it is also filled with air only, but look at the size difference. Right? Well, like you don't have to have a pillow when you're sleeping. You can just fold your clothes together and just sleep on it. But you mean, I mean, look at the size. This stuff. Okay, so this is what I have for cooking. Um, one thing at a time. This over here is a single burner uh, backcountry stove or a portable gas stove. Um, it's from Primus or Primus. Um, this thing is really cheap. It's a $20 um, gas stove. If you look it up, Primus, let me show you the brand right here. You'll see this on Amazon. It sells for like 20 bucks. It's cheap. It's good. It's light. Um, the only problem is I have to buy a new one because my previous one, the connector broke. 
and that was uh, pretty troublesome because that's all I had at the time. So obviously with that stove you need this, um, a uh, propane gas um, that's for backcountry. If you go to Mac or you know Bass Pro Shop or whatever you'll see a lot of this you know, laying around. This over here is my stoves. This is a backcountry um, cooking set. So you have lids and pots. You know, so I'm just gonna let them go. All right. Um, this is great when you're just get, when you're going by yourself or with another person because it's lightweight. Um, it's good enough to cook for two people. If you have more than two people and you're cooking with it, it takes a long, 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 long time. So it's definitely not recommended. I also have this mug. Um, Okay, I don't think I need to talk now. When you're doing backcountry camping, water access is obviously very important. It's not like you're doing car camping where you can just buy water bottles and keep that in your car. So water access requires water filter because um, you can't just drink out of the river or a lake, right? There's always um, a risk of getting infected or sick from the water. So I got this, so you could just fill water in here and this over here is a water filter. But the problem with this is that the water flow is slow. So when you want to drink a lot of water at once when you're hiking, this guy takes a long time. This is a new one I got. This is from Be Free. You can get this from Mac. Um, this is great, right? The water flow is great. Let me see if I can show you guys. Look at that water flow. All right, it's actually pretty good. The only problem with this is that it does not hold a lot of water. This holds 500 liters at once, and I mean, that's not a lot of water, right? When you're camping, um, obviously campfire is very important. The last essential thing you kind of have to get is this. This is a saw. There you go. All right, this is a saw like you can use for um, sawing down dead wood and stuff like that. For real. This is not cheap though. This guy cost about 75 bucks before tax. I mean, there are tons of different varieties and choices that cost less, way less. Another thing you would need is this guy. A backcountry knife. I'm not gonna talk about too much about a knife. I mean, it's pretty intuitive. The following things are not essential, but they're also highly recommended. So first we have this rope. Rope for backcountry camping. Actually, I take that back. It is essential because you need to bear proof your items and you need, you need a long rope to pull up your stuff. Earlier I talked about how you don't want to get your stuff wet, especially your sleeping bag, your, um, your clothes and stuff like that. You keep them in here. So if it starts raining, if um, your bag unfortunately fell in the water, they keep your stuff dry. A camping chair. Helinox camping chairs are great. They're lightweight, they're small. The only problem with them is that they're expensive. This thing is more than a hundred bucks. Lastly, we have this small foam pad. This is great to bring. They're small, they're very lightweight, and do they, they're very functional. Um, you can put this under your knees, um, you can you know sit on this, you don't have to bring a chair, you can just use the wood and put this on top and sit on it. You can use this to fan the campfire, a lot of different things, be creative. And that's it! So I hope you guys learned a couple things from me today. Um, I'm in love with what I've bought um, this winter, I guess, as my, as my gear upgrades. And it took me three years to learn um, what I really need to bring back country camping and it cost me quite a bit of money so I really wish that you know this video helped you guys to save a couple bucks here and there that's it that's it I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break from camping because first of all this is um, we have like one of the coldest air in Canada right now on planet and uh, it's, it's too dangerous to be camping out there like this so I'm not gonna go and the other thing is I am sick. I'm still recovering from uh, my injuries from my last trip um, where it was negative 25 and I was very unprepared. 
and I got injured. So I can't wait to get out. Hopefully the uh, the weather will get better in no time and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! And now I gotta put everything back. Stupid. Ah. Oh, wet, like frozen.